the life's blood of a newspaper. Speed, speed, speed. Train, telegraph, airplane, telephone, and radio. Get the story, get it to the paper, get the paper on the street. Every available development of science and engineering has been utilized to get the story to the reader in the shortest possible time. And now, the latest miracle of news gathering, sending pictures by wire, has lifted the curtain on a new era in newspaper history. It is only a matter of minutes after a news event has occurred before newspapers all over the country are carrying pictures that tell the story more graphically and completely than the printed word. By simply picking up a telephone and calling the paper. Most of these machines work by wrapping the picture around a drum and then moving a single sensor slowly along it. This model shows the basic idea. Uh, the page transformed into a string of black and white bits and then all recombined at the receiving end. Rex and I have had a go at sending a fax like this using our lathes. I'm going to send the message to this message to Rex. Um, this is my light sensitive switch, the sensor. I'm going to put that in the lathe here. <coughs> Clamp it in. Now I've connected it up to this little sounder so that it'll squeak whenever it passes over, over a black bit of the message. This is a soggy paper like we used over at Tim's workshop. Now I'll put this paper around a drum on my lathe and this piece of wire represents the nail we used. Now this little sensor, this microphone, I'll put on the loudspeaker of the telephone and uh, when it picks up the bleeps from Tim's sandy unit on his lathe, it will leave a mark, it will go through here, leave a mark on the paper by a sound sensitive switch. And the same thing as if I shout into it. If I start the lathe up, hang on, if I start the lathe up, I'll, uh, and you actually see it, the little light will come on if I shout, hello. You can actually see the smoke coming off the paper where the current's going through. Hello, one, two, three, one, two, three. Let me switch off again. And then you can actually see the black marks left by the, my voice. Anything coming through yet, Tim? Tim? Can you hear me, Tim? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you send me a sync pulse, sir? Yeah, I just have to tape the thing to the uh, phone. Okay. So, um, with the microphone and uh, my sounder connected to the handsets of our phones, um, we should be able to fax the message. Okay, I'll tape mine on. Okay. Uh... I'll just tape that on the edge of the speaker. Right, get the lathe going. Uh, the only thing is, first I just have to send a pulse once a revolution, because Rex has got to get his lathe going at exactly the same speed as mine. Can you hear the pulse? Right, Tim, we got sync. Can you hear me? Okay. Well, it's coming through quite clearly now. I can even see the first line. Before I stop it, it says Utopia. I'll stop the lathe. Ah, oh, yes, the first line is, yes, it's Utopia. And the second line is Services, but it's very wobbly. Um, it's a job to keep it in sync, but it's not bad for a lathe. This is the Met Station at Hemsby, where they send up hydrogen balloons with cheap disposable instruments attached to record weather conditions in the upper atmosphere.
The information from sites like Hemsby all over the country is collected at the Met head office and assembled into the weather map. A completed map is then sent back here by fax. Although it looks quite neat and modern, the fax receiver is actually still endearingly primitive. It still uses vain, soggy paper, and inside it's all very mechanical still. Uh, looks a bit like a, a lawnmower, actually. I'll just stop it. This rotating helix, the bit in contact with the paper, slowly moves along the line from one end to the other. It has considerable drawbacks. For a start, it only works with dedicated phone lines. It creates quite large sparks across the paper as it prints out the message. And this means that this contact strip has to be replaced every, every day or two. Also, the paper stops working as it dries out, and uh, the vapour it gives off can be a health hazard. The machine's days are now numbered. They're gradually being replaced by a computer system. It is extraordinary, though, that although fax machines have had specialist uses like this for over 50 years, that they've only come into general use in the office in the last five. Every year, more than 200 million telegrams pass through the hands of... The main of reason why fax machines took so long to catch on is that an alternative system for sending written messages by telephone lines had already become established the teleprinter and telegram service. The keys are punched. The distant receiver records each letter on a moving paper tape. An operator removes the tape and gums it to the familiar yellow blanks. Bain had pioneered teleprinters after he abandoned the fax, but he got involved in furious patent battles. Mr. Bain, the court finds you did not invent any of these things. Oh, that was my patent. Why did I leave Scotland? At least I could trust my sheep. Oh. Oh. He died, bitter and penniless, in a home for incurables in 1877. You are about to witness a race between the Xerox telecopier transceiver and Speed Johnson, one of the fastest messengers in the world. They will both attempt to get a copy of this important document to a destination at the other end of the city. And they have to get it there in four minutes or less. OK? On your mark. Get set. Go! Speed will be using an ordinary motorcycle. The telecopier, an ordinary telephone. By the 1960s, electronics had advanced enough to revive interest in office fax machines or telecopiers. They were very expensive, slow, and different manufacturers' machines were all incompatible with each other. The telecopier copy has just arrived, ladies and gentlemen, in exactly three minutes and 57 seconds. The development that really made the fax machine practical was the digital fax. This not only split the image up into lines, but into a complete grid of tiny squares. So first you have to put the a grid over the image, and then decide uh, which squares are going to be white and which squares are going to be black. That's what I've done down here. Well, now I can send uh, this to Rex, just like I did at the beginning of the program, square by square. Um, the only difference is that this time Rex uh, needs an assistant because Rex is going to have to look at what he's doing to get the paint exactly in the squares. He's got a similar grid with the squares marked out just like mine. Right, OK. Soft! Black! White! Black! White! Black! 